everyone, Suzanne here. Welcome to my Tomb Raider 3 playthrough. This is going to be the level Caves of Kalia or Caves of Kalia. I'm not 100% sure. I think I'm just gonna go with Kalia. <laughs> so for anyone who doesn't know, this is a really, really short, mainly boss kind of level. But I do think this is going to be still a long enough video anyway, because we have a lot of story to cover in this and a really, really long cutscene. So because of that, I would recommend to grab your popcorn, grab your snacks, grab your crisps, your fizzy drinks, whatever it is that you like and to sit back and enjoy this because this is really going to be really really story heavy video and I think it's just going to be a lot of fun. As far as I'm aware there are no secrets in this level so I'm actually going to go for all kills in this just to like give me something fun to do and a bit of a challenge to work towards. There's 15 kills in total, so I'm going to try and get all of those. And just a really quick recap. So we found Tony's raft crashed, destroyed and abandoned at the bottom of a waterfall at the end of the last level. There was no body, so we know he survived. He made his way into the caves of Kalia and we're basically going to make our way through this cave system to try and catch up with them because he stole our artifact and we want it back. So let's just get straight into it. Okay, so here we are in the creepy caves of Kalia. Uh, we can't climb back out. So, um... <laughs> Okay, I'm just gonna start off by saying I will get lost. I know and remember in and around where everything is, but I'm definitely gonna get lost at some point. So let's just see what happens. Um, hang on. No, this is the one with the boulder. It's too soon, too soon to go here. Uh, I'll miss some pickups if I do. God. Um, what's down here? What's that noise? Snake. Okay. Okay, nothing here. But it's, I mean, it's still good that we got it because we're trying to go for all kills, so. Nothing. This level creeps me out so much. Okay. Pick it up. Thank you. What's down here? I can't see anything. That looks like a really long drop. I don't think I want to go down there. Um, is 
Let's check down here first. Oh, yeah, I remember this. There are flares down here, I think. Okay. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that's everything for the first section. I had it like in my head that there's three things to get and then we go to the boulders. So yeah, I hope so. Oh, oh no. Um, this, oh, I've gotten lost now. Hang on, is this it? Oh, I think so. Yeah, okay. Um, I presume this is like a sprint, sprinty thing. Um, oh, crap, 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 crap. No. What? I'm alive? Can I get out? Let me out. Let me out. Oh my god! There you go. You're- well you're supposed to sprint in here but you can kind of have a jammy way out there. So I guess if you run all the way to the wall in the very corner, the ball doesn't kill you. That's really cool. Okay. Um... I know there's another boulder here because there's a ramp, so... Oh, this is a game of chicken again. <gasps> oh! oh my god! Oh! <laughs> oh my god, that scared me so much! It wasn't- it wasn't the boulder that scared me, it was that music. I actually feel like I had a mini cardiac episode or something. <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> okay, so maybe don't run as far this time. That's not far enough. Maybe if I jump backwards. Go, 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 go! There we go. That's a good way to do it. Jump backwards until that music um, scares the crap out of you. <laughs> okay. Whew, this is stressful. Okay. I see that stuff. Do you have anything? No. Fine. What's here? I'm so scared. I feel like something's gonna kill me. Oh. I'll take that. Which way to go first? I don't like mazes. <laughs> ah. Is there anything? Oh, there is a medipack. Thank you. Um, okay, so. I remember that that's a pushable block and we push that block. 
but there is a bit over here that we didn't explore yet. Like here. Is that a pushable block as well? It is. Oh, now I don't know which way to go. What's that? What is that? It's all the same block. Interesting. Maybe where I meant to go is behind this, so I've I need to push it from the other side. Maybe. Well, I'm just gonna leave it the way I found it anyway and explore down here. Literally so stressed out right now. Um, okay, what is here? You're not pushable. You're not pushable. Nothing. What's down here? Nothing. Okay. Um, I guess there's just a big pile of nothing down this entire corridor. So I'm gonna go back to the block and try and... Ooh, what's this? I feel like that's a trap. Should we try it? Oh wow, that's literally where I came from. Oh my god, I am so stupid sometimes. Okay, that's where we came from. So let's just go back around here. Ah, that's not the right way. Okay, here we go. So let's see if there's anything behind this block. There's something anyway. There is. I knew it. Um... Okay, have to go this way. I'm so scared. The atmosphere in here is just so creepy. Okay. What's that? What's this? I feel like I'm just going back the way I came or something. Did I go back the way I came? Is this a start? Stop. Why would that just lead me back to the start? No, I refuse. I refuse to accept this. Oh, hang on. What the hell? Did something open or something back at the start? I don't know. I'm gonna go back and just double check 
that area where I was because I thought it was the start of the level but now I don't think it actually was so um let's just see okay so that's where we came from so let's just have a look down here and see if there's anything Oh my god. You absolute little Well, it cost me a medipack, but I did get another cobra, so <sighs> Yay. Right, what's in here? Oh my god. Dead end. Nothing. <laughs> Dead end. Okay, so I guess we just go back the way we came then. I think the only thing here was a cobra. This level is so disorientating. And can I... <gasps> so dark. So freaking dark. And I remember this. It's the Cobra Pit. Stop it, music. Oh, okay. I managed to miss the boulder. I got poisoned, but that's okay. I was just conscious of not getting um, smushed by the boulder. Okay, so let's take one of these, heal ourselves. Do not leave me down here in the dark. This is terrifying. This is like proper stuff of nightmares. I think that's all. 10 cobras in the pitch dark cobra pit. I'm just still really happy I didn't get uh, smushed by the boulder. Okay, we're finally at the end of the caves of Kalia. And I feel like this is a good time just before we go into the boss battle that we just pause for a moment and I want to just give you some information on Tony. I know that's kind of a spoiler. Yeah, we're about to fight Tony. Although I feel like you could have guessed that. <laughs> so as previously discussed, Tony is a researcher for Orx Tech working for Dr. Willard. He and his colleagues Randy and Rory were sent to the Indian jungle to retrieve the Infada stone artifact. However, Tony went insane from the isolating effects of the jungle and also from the effects of the Infada stone. After Lara explores the temple and finds Randy and Rory dead and mutilated and the artifact missing, she then exits the temple to see Tony floating down the river Ganges laughing manically. Tony has stolen the artifact and embedded it in his chest 
Just like Marco Bartoli did with the dagger of Xi'an in Tomb Raider 2, he kind of just like stabbed it into, into his chest. Now, here's where it got really interesting in my research. So, it is heavily implied that Tony, Randy, and Rory all went to the Shiva temple to retrieve the Infada stone. Tony then took the stone, descended into full-on madness, driven insane by the powers of the artifact, and murdered Randy and Rory using the powers that the artifact gave him. He then returned to the camp in a disturbed state where he met Lara. And that to me was really interesting because it means when Tony had been there basically saying, oh yeah, Randy and Rory went up to the temple and something really bad happened to them. Like, it's kind of suggested that of course he knew that because he did that to them with the supernatural powers or whatever that the stone gave him. And perhaps you could say then that he was kind of saying to Lara, oh, don't go there, bad things will happen. Maybe he didn't want to end up killing her or he knew it would waste her time to go there because the artifact was gone. He had it. Who knows? So when Lara then exits the temple and sees Tony floating down the river, he has at this stage stabbed himself with the artifact and gained these kind of supernatural powers and abilities. He then uses these supernatural powers to cause the temple to collapse, almost killing Lara. So that's how the temple collapsed. And if you rewatch that scene, you can see how he's kind of waving his arms around um, and causes the temple to fall down. So Lara then tracks Tony down to the caves of Kalia, and we now have to fight Tony and his mystical powers in order to get the Infada Stone artifact back from him. So I just kind of thought that that was some interesting info to just fill in some of the gaps with Tony and kind of explain why we're suddenly fighting him now and he all of a sudden has these like crazy magical powers. Okay. Um, so there is Medipack here. And this. Okay, we can, can we see him from here? Not yet. So I am going to use the shotgun, I think. And the trick with Tony is to just keep moving. Them shooting fire everywhere. Hey, well, that is. What the hell? Well, there I was looking all smug, like, well, that's a really easy way to kill him. I was set on fire after he died. I am so mad, like literally so mad right now. <laughs> How dare the game? How dare the game? But yeah, that's what I was saying. You have to keep moving or you catch on fire. He's like hurling fire at you and he turns all the water into fire. But I had killed him. There you go. Don't celebrate too early. Stupid Tomb Raider 3. I am so angry. <laughs> Did I, am I okay? Okay. <laughs> we managed to not be set on fire. Thank you. 
Okay, so I'm not gonna collect the artifact yet because I want to get these pickups. Grenade launcher, that's awesome. Okay. Okay, careful. want to be misrepresented by that retarded research you've just been with. Uh, Lara. I'm Dr. Willard. I'd come to converse with Tony myself, but I saw you were doing a rather more creditable job, I think. Indeed, I'm inspired. I'd like to offer you other work. What? Shoot the breeze with some of your other boys? No thanks. Fortunately, they were the only lab rats we let loose into the field. No. My request is for three other artifacts like this. The Infada tribe only had one artifact of this type. It's unique. Anyway, what would your interest in it be? I'll show you. It's not from India, rather an island near Antarctica. It is in fact meteorite rock that has been fashioned and used by Polynesians who were once settled there many, many years ago. See that? That's unique, an unknown material. So how did it end up here? Formed from the planets, sculpted by Polynesians, distributed by goons. Our excavations and investigations have led us to this, a sailor's diary from Charles Darwin's expedition on the HMS Beagle. August 14th, 1834. This voyage is getting too boring for me to go on with this journal. Me adventures at sea are an embarrassment. The only tales I'll have to tell are hours of bird watching, picking and pressing flowers, following them blasphemous ideas of the governor, Darwin. But this don't even concern me now. I just want food. Something more than vegetable broth in me. Today we five have made a pact. The only sampling we're going to be doing is for meat. Pure, solid, blood-rich meat. The snow's run out. The tracks have gone. Just keep going. We're on its trail. There's only four. None for you. Say nothing about this to the governor, else we'll be back having to hunt down that creature for his samples. Paul fell down a crevasse, okay? Okay, Stephen. Amen. Stephen was to be the only survivor of the four. When he arrived back in London, he superstitiously sold off his artifact, having seen his pals murdered or killed with theirs. One here in India, one in the South Pacific and one in Nevada. The places where I'd like you to go. Sounds good to me. Okay, that was uh, gruesome. <laughs> so again, 
There was a lot of talking and information in that cutscene and I've never ever understood what's happening before. The flashback with those men always confused me so much. So I was really happy to actually look it up and find out what that's all about. Now, as I said at the start of the video, do sit back, relax, have your snacks, you know, your drinks, whatever. This is going to be a long one. <laughs> Lara emerges from the caves of Kalia and sees a boat chugging down the river. The pilot, who is Dr. Willard of Orex Tech, calls out to her and she climbs aboard. He tells Lara that he was on his way to have a word with Tony, presumably about Tony ignoring Dr. Willard's radio communications as we saw in the campsite cutscene. Dr. Willard says that he sees Lara has done a better job of taking care of Tony than he would have and offers her some work. Lara at first refuses, but Dr. Willard says that she wouldn't have to work with any of the lab rats like Tony, Randy and Rory and that he wants the other artifacts. He says this pointing to the Enfada stone that Lara has removed from her backpack and has resting on her lap. Lara is confused and says that the Indian Infada tribe only had one artifact like this and that it's unique. She's confused about his mention of other artifacts. She then asks him what his interest in the artifact is. Dr. Willard then takes the Infada stone and scans it, showing Lara that it's not from India, but an island near Antarctica. He explains that it's a meteorite rock that has been shaped and used by the Polynesians who were once settled there years ago. He points to the computer and says that it is a unique and unknown material, i.e. it's like alien and from space. <laughs> Lara then asks how the artifact ended up in India if it is from Antarctica. Dr. Willard says, and this is a direct quote, formed from the planet sculpted by Polynesians, distributed by goons, our excavations and investigations have led us to this. A sailor's diary from Charles Darwin's expedition on the HMS Beagle, close quote. <laughs> he picks up a leather-bound diary and hands it to Lara, who begins to read. And here I just want to give a very, very brief note on the Polynesians, just so we kind of understand. We will go into a lot more detail on the Polynesians and this tribe in the South Pacific levels because it is much more relevant there and I don't want to have too much information at once, but I do think it's worthwhile just to briefly mention the history of this Polynesian tribe. So millions of years ago, despite freezing conditions, a tribe of Polynesians settled in Antarctica and discovered the remains of the meteorite. They used the meteorite's alien substance to fashion four, as far as we know right now, wink. <laughs> don't be, don't be spoiling, please, in the comments saying, Suzanne, it's not four artifacts. I know, but in the main Tomb Raider 3 game, it's four. Please don't spoil it below for the people who haven't seen the games and the expansion pack, okay? Please don't spoil it below for people who've never seen Tomb Raider before. It's four artifacts right now, but I will do a little wink, okay? If you know, you know. <laughs> Okay, so they made this substance into four meteorite artifacts. <laughs> However, mutations started occurring in the Polynesians' newborns and they fled the island in terror, which, yeah, I don't blame them. And they left all of the artifacts behind. So that's just important to know that this Polynesian tribe are the ones who made these artifacts, but because of the energy and the substance that they're made from, weird stuff started happening. The newborns had all these weird mutations and the Polynesians got so scared that they left all the artifacts behind and ran away 
which yeah, I don't blame them. So that's just good information to know for the next scene we're about to talk about. Okay, so as Lara is reading from the diary, we then flash back to a scene from August 14th, 1834, and we are aboard Charles Darwin's expedition on the HMS Beagle. Five men, Smith, Henderson, Caulfield, Johnson, and the diary writer Stephen Barr row out to an island on a small boat. Now, Stephen, the person who wrote the diary, is in a red coat and he carries a kind of a pistol gun um, just to make him stand out from the others, which is always helpful. <laughs> so Stephen wrote in his diary that they were so hungry that this expedition was not to collect samples for Charles Darwin. This was an expedition to find meat, to find food food. They were so hungry, that's why they rode out to this island. So they find some animal tracks and follow these to an icy cave. The guy called Henderson finds and picks up a lizard carved from translucent stone, which we will see later on in the game is one of the other four artifacts. So they start finding more and more of these artifacts lying around, as I said, now that we know that the Polynesians just dropped the artifacts and literally fled, it makes sense as to why they're all just lying there. So while the other men are doing this and distracted, Stephen decides to wander off and have a little look around. He shines his lantern on some large stone carvings and notices more animal tracks leading on through the cave. Caulfield, who honestly seems kind of annoying, I won't lie, calls out, too late, there's only four, as in saying, ha ha, we all have one of these cool stone things and you don't. And I say he seems annoying because I feel like Stephen could have warned him sooner that the wolf was over, but he didn't. So I was wondering if he was kind of going, you know what, you're so annoying. I don't care if you get like eaten by a wolf. <laughs> but anyway, unfortunately for poor Caulfield, a wolf appears on the ledge above him and attacks, biting his throat, which is really, really gruesome. Made me feel kind of sick, but anyway. Stephen then raises his pistol and fires. The wolf retreats and Stephen helps Caulfield to his feet as the men all make a run for it. Another wolf then appears and gives chase as the first wolf goes back and starts licking up the pool of blood. Now, I don't know if they included that scene to show, like we we're talking about with the monkeys, that the energy from these stones is making these wolves like way more aggressive than normal. It's making them kind of evil. Um, I don't know if that was the thought behind it, but I, I think so. I think they were trying to show that these wolves are like way more aggressive than a wolf should normally be. So as Stephen and Caulfield are crossing the ice bridge, it begins to collapse. The wolf that was chasing them is impaled on an icicle and the two men slide down a tunnel and land outside. Stephen is relieved, but he then notices that Caulfield has died. And again, I'm not surprised, like, he had his throat ripped open. He lost a lot of blood. I don't know how they would expect him to survive that. That's a really serious injury. So the men show their respect for Caulfield, they dig him a grave, and we see the same wooden cross that Dr. Willard found during his excavation in the opening cutscene. This is the exact same place as the opening cutscene, and I guess Dr. Willard excavated poor Caulfield's grave. The men all agree to say that Caulfield simply fell down a crevasse because they didn't want to tell the truth and have to go back and, you know, hunt down those wolves or collect samples from them or whatever. Which, you know, I kind of get, like, don't do more work than you have to. So the scene then shifts back to Lara and Willard on their little chuggy chug boat, where Dr. Willard explains that Stephen ended up being the only survivor of the remaining four men. And when he arrived back in London, he superstitiously sold off his artifact, having seen all his friends 
murdered or killed with their artifacts. So this is kind of suggesting that like we're talking about that evil bad energy that the artifacts have and give off that by owning them, by possessing them and having them in close proximity, ill fortune was, you know, attracted to these men. And it was like walking around with a, you know, a target on you, basically. So Stephen decided, I am getting rid of this artifact. Someone else take it, get away from me. So one of the men died in the South Pacific, one died in India, and one died in Nevada. Now, just a little note quickly here on the artifact, just because we're ending the India section. So in India, the Infada stone fell into the hands of the Infada tribe, and they were named after the stone. So they found the Infada artifact, and then they were then called the Infada tribe because they worshipped um, this stone. And they placed it in a temple dedicated to the god Shiva, which is where Tony stole it from. So I think for years and years, this tribe lived in the jungle, worshipped this stone after its previous owner met a gruesome end somewhere in that Indian jungle. Lara then closes the diary and hands it back to Willard saying, sounds good to me. So that kind of suggests that Lara is intrigued by this. She is interested in helping Dr. Willard find the rest of these artifacts and the fact that he knows where they all are. He just needs someone to go get them basically. So she's interested. He said, you can still work solo. Just go and get me these artifacts. You know, we can we can work together on this. And uh, yeah, she, she's pretty interested. So we know where we're going next anyway. We're going Nevada, South Pacific and London. Okay, so in that level, um, yeah, there are no secrets. Um, we got all 15 kills. So that was a little bit of a challenge. Yeah, I'm really happy with that, except for the fact that Tony, like, randomly set me on fire twice. I'm pretty annoyed about that, but that's okay. <laughs> I think that was more just my own stupidity. <laughs> okay, and let's just um, go to the next bit, because as we discussed with that cutscene, we now know that the artifacts, um, the remaining ones, are in three different places. And the awesome thing about Tomb Raider 3, obviously if you've never played it before, is that you get to choose where you go. So you have a choice between South Pacific, London, or Nevada. Now, if you've played it before, you know the smart choice to play first is Nevada, because um, without giving too much away and too many spoilers, because as I said, I know there are a number of people who watch my playthroughs who've never played Tomb Raider before. So I try not to spoil it um, as much as possible beforehand. But um, with Nevada, there is an incident that happens there where you lose everything that you have. You lose all your guns um. I think all of your ammo and possibly medipacks and stuff. I'm not 100% sure, but you basically lose a crap ton of stuff. So it's better to play those first. Um, so I think I'm going to do Nevada. Then I'll do South Pacific because I feel like London is the hardest. So I want the most stuff built back up before I do London. And... Also, I feel like it just makes the most sense to end with London because that's where the last artifact was that uh, our friend Stephen sold. So it feels like a good kind of way to end. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. And yeah, we're off to Nevada.